Well, let's look at the news in detail. And our top headlines work begins on the first phase of affordable housing project at Saglemi, Old Ningo, in the Pram Pram district of the Greater Accra region. The Ghana Union of Traders Association to protest against falling city by closing shops from today, June 24, till Friday, June 27. Family of the late Naan Dani Dasana, overlord of the Nanumba traditional area, is asking government to release his body by Thursday for burial. And um, the CEO or the chief executive of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, Gideon Kwaku, urges government to sign the Economic Partnership Agreement, the EPA. Now, our news in detail. Work has begun on the first phase of government's affordable housing project at Saglemi at Old Ningo in the Pram Pram district of the Greater Accra region. The 1,502 housing units are expected to be completed in 2016 and handed over to a mortgage company for allocation. The entire housing project involves 5,000 housing units built on 1,272 acres. It will comprise two, three and four bedroom houses to be built in three phases. Uh, we will have roads, sewage uh, pipes, uh, drainage pipes, uh, water supply, the, the, the area to export, the drainage system, the sewage system, uh, everything will be done uh, at the same time of the... Do we have more hospitals as part No, but yes, this, we have a, a area where they will construction the they will construct the, the, the hospital but not is included in this phase this uh, we have only the area to do that this 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 phase is only residential and infrastructure uh, 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 developed the entire housing project of 5,000 units is estimated at about 200 million dollars Ghana home loans is however expected to take up the first 1,502 which will be given out on mortgage Deputy Minister of Water Resources, Works and House and Samson Ahi explains this should allow prospective homeowners to acquire them on flexible payment terms. Ghana Home Loans will be the mortgage financial institution. So uh, when the contractor finishes uh, the construction, they will buy it from the contractor, pay the contractor, and the individual beneficiaries will be dealing with Ghana Home Loans for the mortgage package. How affordable is this affordable housing project? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what, uh, what is affordable is relative. It depends on the payment arrangements. So we, we think that we should, as much as possible, uh, allow mortgage financing, where people will be given 20 years, 25 years to pay. And that is why we have different type of houses. We have one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. And I'm sure you know that the prices will not be the same. And so depending on your financial strength, then you can opt for one bedroom, which may be affordable to you. And if you have a mortgage facility to pay for uh, one bedroom, I'm sure it will be affordable to you. Can you give us a unit price of this house? I, I think uh, other factors are coming in, so we are, we are looking at it. And... Uh, the, the prices of each facility will be made known to the people. The Parliamentary Select Committee on Works and Housing was at the project site to acquaint themselves with the development. Matilda Humaga for Joy News. Oh, so a lot of investment into the housing sector to reduce the current housing deficit has been experienced by a lot more Ghanaians. And talking about investment, the chief executive of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, Gideon Kwaku, says it might be prudent for the country to sign the economic partnership agreement given the current challenges facing the export sector. Heads of state of the ECOWAS are set to meet here in Accra next month and possibly adopt the pact with the European Union. Gideon Kwaku, however, tells Joy Business, Ghana must work hard to diversify its exports to address some concerns with the Economic Partnership Agreement. The EPA allows Ghana to have 100% access to the European market at no cost, except for rice and sugar, whilst the EU countries will also have 75% access to Ghanaian market, duty-free and also quota-free system.
Let's talk issues of peace and security and Konkumbes and Bimobes in Nangpanduri have resolved to end their three decade long protracted land dispute and live peacefully to facilitate the development of the area. At uh, Unification Deba at the palace of the Nairi, the overlord of the Mampurugu traditional area, the chiefs from the two ethnic groups as well as the youth shared kola knot in a symbolic gesture to seal their unity and peaceful coexistence. Anti-divisional empowerment chiefs from the Mampugu traditional kingdom, made up of the Konkombes, Mampusis, and Bimobes, attended the historic ceremony, which was witnessed by members of the Northern Regional Security Council, led by the regional minister, Alaji Mohamed Muniru Limuna, members of parliament from the area, and the West African Network for Peace Building, among others. A colorful display of the rich culture of the two ethnic groups was displayed as the two fielding chiefs joined the youth to dance to the throbbing beats of the gongong to to demonstrate their commitment to coexist peacefully. Both the Konkombes and Bimobes chiefs in Nakpanduri attributed the conflict that engulfed the area to the devil and lamented how it has caused so much distress. I am aware that we currently have relative peace in this area, but to give this fragile peace a meaning, we all have to commit ourselves by coming together in this endeavor as a symbolic gesture to our people and the whole world that we have all agreed to live in peace. Nan Devi Kansuk, chief of Nangpaduri, who read a speech on behalf of the Bimobes Nan Nasimon, chief of the Konkobe, said the day should mark an end to the destruction of the area by conflicts. The Northern Regional Minister, Alaji Mohamed Muniru Limuna, who played a vital role in leading the Regional Security Council and wanted to mediate between the factions, was happy about the peaceful end to the conflict. We all know the importance of peace and peace to development. It is very key to development. And we know that peace it is not a commodity that can be bought from the market. It is we, we have to create the peace. So I'm happy that today we have been able to come together to create this peace. And what do we do? We must try hard to maintain the peace. He cautioned the people to be mindful of attempt by some individuals to revive the conflict to satisfy their own selfish interests. Hashmin Mohammed's reports from the northern region. And several kilometers away, the family of the late overlord of the Nanumba traditional area is asking government to release for burial by Thursday the body of the murdered chief. The family insists the manner in which the late overlord was murdered required that he be buried as soon as possible and in conformity with Islamic tradition. Now, Dani Dasana was murdered together with four others in a siege at his palace on Thursday by men said to be in uniforms. They were led to have opened fire on the overlord, shooting and killing him and four others. Several others were injured in the raid, including a four-month-old baby. The raid is said to have been triggered by the death of Nakpa Na Salifu Dawuni, one of two persons contesting the Bimbala skin. The two factions are in disagreement over where to bury Nakpa Na Dawuni. There have been many other disturbances in the township as a result of this very disagreement. Some 17 suspects have so far been arrested in connection with the murder. On Monday, the Defense Minister Mark Wayongo, who is also acting as the Minister of the Interior, together with the MP for the area, Dominic Nitawo, and the IGP Mohammed Ahmed Al Hassan, paid a visit to the palace where the overlord was murdered to commiserate with family members. Elders at the palace are still mourning the death of the overlord, who they describe as very peaceful and very law abiding. We'll turn our attention to some other news and financial services giant Morgan Stanley says the Ghana City will end the year at a three Ghana City 40 peswa rate against the dollar. Well, the prediction was contained in the investment bank's latest outlook report for some economists in Africa in which Ghana was also mentioned. The institution's prediction was based on the lack of a credible program to stabilize the economy, a weak global commodity demand, and unfavorable terms of trade. The bank's projection implies that the Ghana city would continue to decline despite review of the recent forex measures by the country's central bank. According to the Bank of Ghana, you would need three Ghana cities, three pesos, to get a dollar from a bank currently today. The report, however, noted the rate of the city's depreciation should be showing down 
or slowing down from next month compared with the first three months of the current year 2014. Also remaining with the issues of the economy and the Ghana Union of Traders Association, that's Guta, says the increasing depreciation of the city coupled with competition from foreigners engaged in the retail sector locally is driving them out of business. Guta has therefore asked its members to close down their shops from Tuesday, June 24 till Friday, June 27 to impress of government to address their concerns. Guta argues that government for some time has turned a deaf ear to their petition to enforce a law that prevents foreigners from engaging in retail business. But top on the list of the challenges they are confronted with is a free fall of the city, which they contend has eroded their capital, making it even more difficult for them to stay in business. When the city was one city to the dollar, one can change 100,000 Ghana cities to and then get about 100,000 US dollars. But when it came down to uh, 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 two cities, it was divided by 100,000 Ghana cities. You were getting $50,000. Now it's about three, three point something. So similarly, you are getting below some, somewhere 30, 33 or 32,000 US American dollars. There's no businessman in this country who can claim that his capital or her capital is still intact. Now it has reduced to about one third of the money that you used to have. So gradually, even I've not spoken about the additional factors like interest rate and inflation. Guta is also unhappy with the use of the dollar to calculate the duty payable by importers in violation of Bank of Ghana's regulations. Although the customs division of the GRA maintains they cannot use the CD as goods imported are purchased in dollars, the association says the argument is not tenable. We have even told them that for the purpose of planning our activities, they can even fix it for about three months or 90 days so that the city to the dollar will remain same as it used to. But now they have not even taken that into consideration ever since we start talking and making this, uh, uh, this statement on, on the various platforms. Now Bank of Ghana, who are the regulators, are telling you that this is what we have to do as a nation. So where from customs to come and tell us that this is how they also want to go about it. Until they come out with Bank, Bank of Ghana to come and educate Ghanaians on this, I don't think it's a right answer to give to Ghanaians. Guta maintains the shop closure should get government to take note of their concerns. It is the foreign nationals who have taken over everything in this country and government sit down unconcerned as if nothing is happening. Hence our agitation that tomorrow a, a press a conference has been done directing all traders to close their shops from tomorrow till Friday. We, during the press conference we had a lot of information that AMA was using vans to go around. The police are also, have also hijacked the central business district of Accra telling people that oh, what they are saying is not true come and then open your shop. We want to ask that is it the police and AMA? And for instance, AMA, have they actually done their works? The kind of garbage that we have in the whole of, in the whole of Accra, have they been able to clear those garbage? Are they the ones who acquired the shops for them or got them the capital to work? So we are saying that members should not fear. They should close down their shops. For Guta, the economy is heading for doom if government does not rise up to address the numerous economic challenges. Abigail Adamakunchi for Joy News. An Accra Commercial High Court has thrown out a request by Republic Bank to nullify HFC Bank's application seeking to stop the takeover of the bank. The court presided over by Justice George Kumson in his ruling noted the application by HFC has merit and should be heard. The judge again struck out an application by the Securities and Exchange Commission that requested the court to throw out HFC's application because it has failed to explore internal procedure to address its grievances. The judge, however, granted a request by lawyers for the plaintiff, HFC Bank, to award a cost of 1,500 Ghana cities against the defendant, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Republic Bank. HFC Bank in May filed a suit in court seeking to place an injunction on the takeover of the institution by Republic Bank. The Securities and Exchange Commission, well, as well as the Republic Bank, were jointly sued by the HFC Bank in the application.
And before we go, an issue that's gaining a lot more prominence in international media uh, says that FIFA are looking into media claims over alleged attempts to fix uh, matches in uh, after Ghana's uh, as well as the FA asked the police to investigate two men who are said to have been involved in the subject and we'll bring you a lot more of that in sports but that's it for the news